I'm Paul, and this is a review of the Skywatcher Star Adventure GTI. I'm gonna show you the results that I'm getting with it, walk you through the setup, and also share what I like and don't like about it. I'll put links in the description below so you can check out everything I talk about for yourself. The Star Adventure GTI has additional functionality over the non-GTI version. Both versions will rotate opposite of the Earth's rotation so that you can track stars or sky objects. The GTI function, or the go-to function, allows you to use an app to find those objects where the non-go-to version, you have to manually find those stars or those objects in the sky, and then you set it up from there. You can go to the link in the description below to check out all the specs, but some highlights are that it holds a payload of 11 pounds or five kilograms. It's only about five and a half pounds, so it's pretty light. And it also can track in the normal mode that counters the Earth's rotation. It can track solar, it can track the moon as well. Now what's most important is let's dig into those results I'm getting from the star tracker. I'm pairing it up with my Canon R5 that I'm shooting this with right now, as well as a Canon 100 to 500 L lens. This is at 7.1 uh, f-stop at 500 millimeters. That is not great, but it seems to work and I'll show you. So first up is Andromeda. So what you're gonna see here in this picture is Andromeda where we got a lot of detail and it's composed of 30 stacked images of 30 seconds at 500 millimeters, f7.1, and an ISO of 1000. So combined, that is 15 minutes of exposure time, and then we took that and stacked it in a special software program, did that image processing, and pulled out this amazing detail. Very impressed with the Andromeda picture here. The next one up, very similar setup. Again, the R5 with the 100 to 500 at 500 millimeters, f7.1, 30 second exposures, but this time we have 40 of them for a total of 20 minutes of exposures did all the calibration, which I'll explain at the end. And again, really happy with the results. One more note on the longer exposure time. So I have done the one minute, two minute, three minute exposure times. And with a zoom of 500 millimeters, I think this is getting a little bit beyond maybe this capability here. You have to do quite a bit of pruning where every third of them or so you'll find an elongated star across there. So you can prune those out, but you still will be able to get enough that you can pull together an image as well but I've been very happy with the results. A very important aspect of any star tracker is the setup process. It can be very technical, sometimes it can be tedious, and that's why I'm gonna go through it in a whirlwind to give you an overview. Fasten the Star Adventure GTI to a 3H tripod screw, insert the AA battery packs, use Apple Maps, Google Maps, or whatever you'd like to get your latitude. Now you're gonna tilt the device up based on those markings on the side to match your latitude. Attach the counterweight, attach the camera, Attach the shutter cable if desired. Slide the counterweight to balance the RA. Slide the camera mount to balance the deck. Rotate the tripod so the device is lined with North or Polaris. Level your tripod with this little bubble that's on it. Point your camera to the right and pop off these caps if they haven't fallen off already. They pop off all the time. Turn on the device. In the SendScan Pro app, go to Utility, Advanced, Polar Scope, and now slide the illumination over till it glows enough that you can see it. You look at the picture and then you line it up with it. Uh, here's an example. Slide the illumination back down to off and put back on the caps. Point the camera forward until Polaris is centered. And then you're going to tighten both the deck and the RA clutches and it's righty tighty for those. Now that you're pointed at a star or during this calibration step with another star, it would be a good time to make sure to focus the camera and get all the settings correct. You can use one of these little tools if you'd like. In the SendScan Pro app, go to alignment and select one, two, or three star alignment. It'll suggest some best stars to align on. You can just pick those, or you can pick ones that you'd prefer based on your setup and scenario and what you can see best. Whenever you do that, you click on one, it's gonna slew over to that star, and then you're going to do some minor modifications to be able to steer it around to get it centered right on your camera, and then click next to the next star and the next star, and then once the calibration is complete, you are good to go. Now you can go in and pick a sky object or a star. You can type it in or select it from a list and it will slew to that and track it through the night. To set up your exposure groups, you can either do it in camera with an external device or plug into the snap port on the Star Adventure. 
What you're gonna do in the app is go to Utilities, Advanced, you go to Camera Control, and there you can add and edit your exposure groups. Once you hit Start, you're off and running. That is the complete setup. Before you tear down, you will want to make sure you do your calibration frames, which I'll talk about at the end, but let me get to the teardown portion. Teardown is very quick. Once you are done, you're gonna turn it off, disengage the RA and deck clutches, lefty-loosey, remove the shutter cable, remove the camera, remove the counterweight, take it off the tripod, and then remove the battery packs. Before I give that whirlwind overview of the calibration and processing, let me give you the pros and cons of what I like and don't like about the Star Adventure GTI. A big con, which you probably heard about me saying already, is this cap on here just falls off. It falls off all the time. I really don't like that part of it. Another benefit to it is that it is pretty light. It's very portable. I can take it around to different places with me, put it in one of the bags, good to go there. Another con is the battery pack. The battery compartment's pretty kludgy. It's held in with a screw. This piece kind of pushes in and snaps in there. And these AA battery packs, they can get put in backwards, and I don't like that. I'd prefer to, to be foolproof and not be able to put it in backwards and be very simple. On the plus side, uh, on a pro there, AA batteries. Uh, most people probably want something rechargeable but it's really handy that you can swap out your AA batteries real quick. You can pick them up anywhere, if you're at a gas station or somewhere. If you have to charge it, you could be out of luck and have to wait for that time to charge. So I do like these. Overall, I'm very happy with the Skywatcher Star Adventure GTI. The end results are awesome that it's producing and it's pretty quick to set up and tear down. And that's really all the things that I'm looking for. Now, I do wanna give you a whirlwind of the calibration files and the processing so you know what you're getting into to get images like this, so let's do that now. This can seem a bit overwhelming, but if you just follow the process, it's pretty simple to get the images that you need for the image processing systems to stack these together. So the first thing is you want to be capturing RAWs, and you will be capturing what's called the lights. Lights means you're looking at the stars, those are the images with those. So you're gonna collect a number of those. Next, you're gonna collect what's called the darks. You're gonna put your lens cap on and you're gonna keep all the settings the same and put that in a new folder that would help you in your camera. We're talking about at least 20 of those. Next, what you're going to do, you're gonna change one setting. You're gonna change your aperture speed to as fast as you can and you're gonna take maybe about 50 of those and you can click right through them real quick and those are your biases. That's with the lens cap on still. Next, you're gonna take that lens cap off and take something like an iPad with a pure white screen, put it in front, it's gonna be defocused, and that's gonna be your flats. You're gonna adjust that speed of the shutter. Again, that's the only thing you're gonna to be touching and get it to between one third and two thirds where that histogram is. And you're gonna take a bunch of those as well. And then next, put that lens cap back on, keep the settings the same, and take a bunch of those. You can see the numbers on the screen here. And those are your dark flats. Now, not every software program needs those dark flats, but that set of images right there will give you everything you need to have your calibration and processing and post-processing. Now for the post-processing, there are many, many different softwares to do this. One that I've used is Affinity Photo 2. There is an Astro Processing. You can load each of these file types into these groups. You click a button and it'll do the processing, and then that's where you go on and have fun with all the levels and bringing out all those details and such. A more advanced one that I've had more success with, because you can do a lot fancier things, but it is more complicated, is Cyril. It's a free tool, but you do need to walk through some tutorials to figure out how to use it. It's really not too bad, but it does take some time investment, but I think you can get better results on it if you're willing to spend some time on your images. I'm still learning, so if you have any tips or suggestions, leave them in the comments below, as well as if you have any questions. And make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you can watch more videos just like this one.